previously on C90 Adventures. Now in the previous video we had already crossed Canada coast to coast including Newfoundland, but I only briefly touched on the details of this special little island because I thought it deserved its own video. So here it is. Now there was something we were rather intrigued about. The people of Alaska were friendly, but they all said that Canadians were even friendlier. And somehow they were. But the funny thing was that mainland Canadians said that the people of Newfoundland were even friendlier again. Now this we had to see. We hadn't been long off the ferry when we asked a local if there was anywhere to camp for free that people wouldn't mind. He almost laughed at us. His reply? Anywhere you want. No one here will bother you. Oh, there's a nice camping spot over there by the beach. Just follow the footpaths. A little apprehensive, we rode towards the beach and onto the footpaths. Now in the UK, the walking Nazis, sorry, that's incorrect, the Ramblers Association have legally got sole use of 99% of all off-road routes and are currently looking to ban vehicles from the last 1%. But here, it's fine. We even came across a dog walker, and rather than the usual shouting and abuse you get in England, we got a conversation. What the hell was going on? We carried on our carefree riding until we found a nice spot to set up camp. We had a look around this gorgeous scenery, and by the time we'd had something to eat, the sun had started to set, and we retreated to a beautiful beach view. Good camping, good people, and pretty landscapes. Newfoundland was starting to look pretty awesome. In the morning we packed up the tent and started riding the maze of trails back to the road and Rach took on the role of navigator for the second time on Newfoundland. <laughs> no, I just thought you knew where you were going. I thought you... All right. It might go somewhere. And it did go somewhere. It went to a bog. And fully loaded bikes don't like bogs. No, I wasn't. I was very stuck. Anybody that says we are not professionals is clearly mistaken. Ray, you're so big and strong. <laughs> <laughs> I've never actually tried that technique before. <laughs> Not on a bike anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we eventually made it to the road and managed to start travelling at more than 10 miles an hour. Although it wasn't without the caribou trying to stop us. We carried on our quest along the lovely coastline and it wasn't long before we headed inland, which gave Newfoundland other ways to look pretty. We were really enjoying the scenery in the pretty fishing villages. This place continued to remind us of days gone by. And in one of the villages we spotted something that made them even prettier. There will be icebergs. We started to see lots of adverts for iceberg tours. Well, they weren't too sure on Captain Dave. Eventually we found a captain that hadn't done cocaine and set sail. We did get a safety briefing. Although I'm not sure how many people understood it. You see, the Newfie accent is interesting. It's not English, and it's not Irish. It's just Newfie. When the winds, the winds are packed off Long Point Lighthouse. Uh, that's straight on the north. So when we get hit in early winds, we get, we get hit quite severely. What I did find very funny was their emergency procedures board, which really appealed to me. Stage one, emergency poncho. Stage two, how to put on a life jacket. Stage three, first aid. And if you're proper screwed, a Bible. Eventually the boat got to some icebergs, and they were quite impressive. But what was even more impressive was when we learnt how long ago the icebergs were formed. How old is that, you say? 10,000 years old. <laughs> Most purest water in the world. <laughs> and of course one of us had to say this at some point. Iceberg ahead! 
After a few hours, the time came for the boat to return to land, and we disembarked to be reunited with our bikes and continue our ride. We started out on the road, but decided to do some more off-roading after we discovered that you're allowed to ride on the old train line, another thing that's illegal in the UK. This route cut right through the heart of Newfoundland, and the ever-changing scenery was lovely. What wasn't so lovely though was the ever-changing riding surface. The hard-packed dirt was nice, and the occasional bridge provided a nice change of pace, or a nice view, but the loose golf ball sized rocks were pretty horrific to ride on. Oh, she saved it! Rachel's off-road riding must be getting much better. Her riding had improved loads. If that had happened a year ago, she'd be in a heap on the floor. Anyway, the day was nearly over, so we started to look for a place to camp, Newfoundland style. We spotted a little turning off of the main trail and decided to have a look. We rode through the tunnel in the trees before being greeted with the perfect camping spot by a lake. All that remained was to ride a few meters across the pebbles without crashing to get to where we'd set up the tent. Hello. <laughs> Once Rachel was vertical again, we set up the tent and got ready to enjoy a calm night's sleep with the sound of the waves lapping the shore. In the morning we had to leave the beach, after pushing Rachel's bike out of the deep sand, headed back out through the tunnel of trees and back to riding along the railway line. The railway line continued to be a fun place to ride and it was on it that Rachel hit a water hazard even faster than I dared go. <laughs> and from one impressive bird to thousands. While following one of the coasts, we came across the breeding grounds of northern gannets that fly to Newfoundland each year to reproduce. There's thousands of them. Pretty cool. We then continued on our happy adventure. See what I did there? Damn, I'm smooth at linking sections together. Smoother than some of the roads. When riding on Newfoundland, you really need to keep an eye out to avoid potholes. Something that can take a lot of calculating. And it wasn't long before we had a new state-of-the-art mirror installed. You'd never know. New mirror! <laughs> Yay! Nailed it. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> the days rolled on by as we continued our quest to explore every inch of this island that we could. And we even got to see puffins! Although that was nothing compared to Rachel filming me as I entered Dildo. Yep, that's right, there's actually a town called Dildo. We visited the Dildo post office, and then the Dildo and Area Interpretation Center. I guess this is where you call me immature for finding that funny. Oh well. Once we had our full of Dildo, we decided to try up the dirt track again, and man was it tight. 
And it wasn't always successful, like this time when a large, wet, overgrown bush stopped play. So I, I came round the corner and look who's stuck. We forgot to waterproof your boots, didn't we? <laughs> In bed, it's my feet are completely dry. Really? No way. It's amazing. <laughs> well done. We'll go back now. Bugger, I've got to turn around now. Anyway, enough innuendo. Determined to find a camping spot for the night, we continued on riding the trails. Once she was upright again, I put the oil back in Rachel's basket and made sure it had a strap on. Over the next few days we found a nice selection of lovely camping spots, some remote and some in campgrounds with fire pits that were perfect for defrosting frozen fish bought from the local fishermen. There's just something that's quite relaxing about a campfire. With the sun setting, I chopped up a fallen tree to keep the fire going, and once the wood was exhausted, we retired to our sleeping bags for the night. A few mornings later... Good morning everybody, it's my birthday. Uh, for my birthday, uh, Rachel Lasham has, uh, has very kindly lassoed me in an iceberg, and it's awesome. Hello. What Rachel Lasham has also done, and I actually have Belief. <laughs> yes. <laughs> My suspicions have been confirmed. Thank you very much, darling. You're welcome. Happy birthday. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, quite a cool iceberg. And that genuinely wasn't there when we set up camp the night before. Anyway, better hit the road again. <laughs> Happy birthday! Thank you I give much. you a total humiliation. <laughs> Even looking like an idiot can't bring you down in this place. This island that modern problems have forgot was really starting to get into our souls. The scenery, the cool kids riding unregistered dirt bikes on the road and waving to us as we rode by, the even cooler kids riding unregistered dirt bikes to school and doing a wheel spin in the gravel to sink them in so they don't fall over. I can't even imagine what the UK media would say about that. I've always thought I was born in the wrong generation, but I wonder if it was just the wrong location. Newfoundland really seemed like days gone by, in the quaint villages, calm fishing scenes, an untouched coastline really resonated with me. It was now our final few nights of carefree wild camping before heading back to the mainland. Man, I miss this place. So Ed is going to show us what's the worst that could happen when you go over a rickety old looking bridgey thing. Go on then. Yeah. <laughs> Smart ass. It was also time to say goodbye to my birthday present as I rode through the spiky bushes. <laughs> and the final time for Rach to take the piss out of my appearance. You do your little shuffle again. <laughs> Once I was fully clothed, it was time to take the final trail back to the ferry that brought us here. We were sad to leave Newfoundland, 
but we had a long way to go to get to the southern tip of Argentina and we had to keep on moving. And it was only to be left the ferry the other side that I truly realised that Newfoundland is now my third favourite place that I've ever ridden. The only part of the Canadian section of our trip left to complete was to ride through the lush green valleys on the eastern seaboard and make our way to the next stage of the journey. The next stage was, of course, the USA. Hello everybody and welcome to the recording studio that I've used for this video update. As you can see this one has only required minor amounts of sheets, air mattresses and pillows to make it suitable to record the voiceover. Um, do you want to give you a bit of a tour of what I've used your PayPal donations to pay for? Uh, hope you've enjoyed the video and if you enjoyed the music then you can also thank the PayPal donations for that because I used the money to buy the music to be used in it because you've got to buy it for licenses and all that. Um, yeah. Uh, this place, I'm going to be in here for a month now, uh, by the time I finish the next video. Uh, £10 a night, so that's 300 quid, so $400, so I've used that money to get the video made. Um, the USA video, why is it not ready yet? Well, what I can show you is, this is the shot list for the, US, for the Newfoundland video, uh, with some of the bits of storyboarding in. Now this is the shot list for the USA video which I've already done and I've gone through. And it is mammoth. Uh, I've been putting off for a long time just because I'm a little bit scared of it. Um, but it needs to be done. And this is a good enough place so that I can do it. Um, nobody can bother me and the acoustics are good for recording. So yeah, thank you very much for the donations. Uh, you guys are actually really are making these videos happen. Um, not being greedy, you know, this is, this is what the money gets used for. Um, special thank you to Joe Fennymore who did the Terminator bit and the Jason Statham talking bit. That was awesome. It was exactly what I wanted. I kept trying to do it myself and I just couldn't. Uh, thank you, Joe, for doing that. It's brilliant. And yeah, I'm going to go now. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, and I hope you've, uh, hope you've enjoyed what your donations have been helping to make happen. So yeah, uh, when I leave awkwardly of this shot, there will be the PayPal address if you wish to give some more money to help more videos happen. So, cool. Bye.